I've got this preset called up and we're going to focus on the pattern page in this video. Now, to start with, I've got a trigger note hitting C sharp to trigger this main pattern, and it's just a two bar sustained note repeated over and over. And this is what it sounds like in the context of a little mix. And you can see it going through the cycle here. Now let me make a couple of adjustments here to these macro controls. And that's great. Brings up some of the low level stuff a bit more. Now I want to explore these parameters. I'm going to start with these at the bottom because to me, this is a lot of what the heart and soul of this instrument is about. Now the Kareem Riggins drums can play with sloppy timing or tight timing. Now we can bring up the tightness there and that's based on the grid divisions. So 16th notes sound good for this groove. So this is completely unquantized versus fully. So you can hear it very duck -duck -duck -duck, very right on the grid. So sloppy timing is kind of the DNA of this, and we can add swing to it. So if I bring this up and dial this, we'll hear a bit of swing to those 16th notes. Duck -a -duck -a -duck -a -duck -a. And that works nicely. Now with this, as we dial it up, we're going to quantize the velocities towards higher values. Wait till a fresh trigger comes up. There we go. And down lower, we'll quantize them towards quieter velocities. And of course, we only hear the difference when a fresh note trigger comes up. I'll leave it in the middle for now. But I want to look under a microscope and see what's going on here. We have MIDI drag and drop from this icon over here. So I'm going to drag this. You can also start and stop playback like that. I'm going to drag this into my DAW underneath here underneath the current track, and we get all the MIDI notes, which we can, of course, edit to our heart's content, either timing or notes or rhythm or what have you. But what I want to look at here is the timing of these notes. So here, I've got this with the full looseness, tightness at zero. Let's bring this up here about halfway, and I'm going to drag the same groove right underneath it over here. And now let's bring it up fully, and I'm going to drag that same groove again with that setting underneath over here. Now I want to look at the note events here so we can see, let's go to the top. We can see the note positions. This is bar, beat, subdivision, and then tick. So of course there are a lot of loose timing, which is what we would expect. Now I'll click the next one, which was in the middle of the tightness. And you can see here that the values change. They're still off, but different values as they're tightened up. You can see some of these change back and forth here as I click. Now, when I click the third one, that was almost fully quantized. It's full tightness. And we can see here, the notes are much closer to the grid. There's a lot more ones in this last column. And the values that aren't ones are either lower or very high. They roll over at 240. So they're very close to the ones, just a little bit of the loose timing preserved. So that versus this, which preserves a lot of the natural offsets versus this, which is fully unquantized. And that Ladies and gentlemen, is the feature of this that I think is the most defining aspect of it. Now, we can do the same thing with swing, and I'm not going to do the exercise again, but it'll push the notes to the next 16th note where applicable. So let me get rid of these, and we'll look at some of the real-time input options. So here, we have an input quantize, which means that when we're playing in real-time and triggering either with the mouse or with the notes on our keyboard, They'll be rounded off to the nearest bar or half note or quarter note or eighth or sixteenth or off where I can just trigger freely. And there I'm triggering that. Now we have latch mode, which means I can take my finger off the key. I'm not holding anything down now. We'll see all the individual samples being triggered here, but it's being held on its own. I hit it again and it stopped. That's the way latch mode works in all of these instruments. It'll hold the note until you trigger it again. Versus when it's off, as soon as you remove your finger from the key, it stops playing. Now we have retrigger, which is interesting. Retrigger is off. Now watch what happens when I trigger one of these and then trigger another pattern. You'll see that it picked up at the position in the cycle and continued on the next groove.
we get kind of an uninterrupted playback. And it keeps going in the cycle. Now, when we have re-trigger enabled, it's going to restart the new groove that's triggered no matter when you play it, notwithstanding this input quantize. So it's a different way of re-triggering where we get an immediate switch to the new beat regardless of when it's triggered. Now, I'm going to turn that off. We have playback speed, which are self-evident. We can play it back at half speed. And it'll play it half of what the default tempo is and double speed. So here, I'm using this groove. Let me get rid of my trigger note here, my region with the trigger note, and drag in the main groove and going to bring that onto the track here and I'll play it back and it'll sound pretty much the same right now. And here's the trigger note coming up and it's the same no matter what but I can of course go in here now and change notes like maybe I like that clap sound and I want to repeat it on the next grid increment just giving you a few quick easy examples. These are all these shakers. Maybe I want to get rid of some of them just to make it a bit sparser. I'm going to just randomly get rid of some. And let's listen to what that sounds like now. Yeah, I like that repeated snap. So I'm going to repeat that there too. Great. And maybe I want this one to be a little bit later even we can see here that it is late already but i'm going to make it even later and that's the way we customize these grooves so by what i like to think of as transplanting the beat from within the kareem riggins drums into your daw we can customize it that way now there's a couple of ways of working i've modified this and i like it maybe i want to Make one or two more modifications. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I can now, you know, get rid of my trigger notes and copy that if I want to use that pattern. Or I can now take the copy and make variations on that one. Or I can take other patterns and build up different grooves for the verse, the chorus, etc. So there's lots of different ways of working with this MIDI export function. These are just a couple of ideas. But that combined with editing the tightness and or swing will really give you a lot of mileage to adjusting and controlling the feel of these grooves. Now, we didn't talk about grid division. So this determines what grid things are going to get quantized to. And we have triplet values with T. And when we're set there, the swing doesn't really have any effect because triplets already have a swing in them. But at these regular grid divisions, the swing offset will have an influence on the pattern playback. So here on this second iteration, these are the kick drums layered together. Maybe I'm going to do something like this just to have a nasty little offbeat kind of swung feel. Let's see what that sounds like. So there was a nice little variation. It actually worked out more musically than I suspected it might. And maybe I want to get a nice quick little double. I'm just going to copy that like that. Give you some ideas. And then maybe lower the velocity of those second hits and do that in DAWs different ways. But again, just a, an idea, a little triplet kind of thing going on there. They're a little too quiet, but it can be really stimulating customizing these grooves because they're so great to begin with. And this adds to the lo-fi swing and sound of it. We'll continue with more in the next video.